Previously, we used snapshots as one level of data protection. To extend this, we'll use the replication functionality in TrueNAS Scale to send our data not just to another pool in the same system, but to another system entirely. Before proceeding with the rest of this chapter, especially the remote replication section, it's important to ensure that your evaluation machines have been upgraded to TrueNAS Scale 22.12.2. This new release of TrueNAS Scale brings several additional enhancements to the replication workflow that we'll be making use of. For our first example, we'll use replication between datasets or pools on the same system. This is useful if you're replicating from a smaller pool of solid state drives to a larger pool of hard drives as an additional layer of redundancy. Two pools or datasets on the same system can have different VDEV layouts and capacities or be configured with different levels of compression on their datasets. From the TrueNAS web UI, navigate to the Datasets pane and select your evaluation pool. Click the Add Dataset button on the top right. Create a new dataset named Local Replica. We'll change the compression level from the default LZ4 to GZIP9. This is a higher compression level that does cause increased CPU utilization. It might increase latency if we were to use this for live data, but for a replica target, this might be an acceptable trade-off. Click the Save button. Navigate to the Data Protection UI. Under Replication Tasks, choose the Add button. For the Source Location and the Destination Location, choose the option of On This System. Use the Tree View beneath the Source Location to select Evaluation and then eval data using the checkbox beside it. For the destination, expand the tree and choose Evaluation, Local Replica. Check off the option to replicate custom snapshots. Change our naming schema from Auto to Manual. This will ensure that we capture the manual snapshot that was taken in an earlier section. Click the Next button. Adjust the replication schedule to Run Once, and then uncheck Make Destination Dataset Read Only. Change the destination snapshot lifetime to the custom value of two months to allow your snapshots to persist for a longer period, then click Start Replication. The task will be confirmed and enter the pending state immediately. If the status does not update on its own, simply navigate back to the TrueNAS dashboard, wait a moment, and then return to the data protection screen again. You should see a state of success, which you can click on to view the additional logs, showing that a push replication was completed. While local replication is excellent for having a second logical copy of your data, it's still sharing the same hardware with the primary copy leaving you vulnerable to physical incidents such as fire, flooding, or a network and power outage, all of which could render your data temporarily or even permanently inaccessible. To mitigate the impact of this issue and add yet another layer to your data protection, the next step is replicating the data to a second TrueNAS system. Obviously, the first requirement for this would be to have a second TrueNAS system. In our example, we'll use a second TrueNAS scale system also running version 22.12.2, in order to leverage those additional features we talked about previously. Your second evaluation system can be physical or virtual, as long as it contains sufficient storage to hold the test data set that you're replicating. For the purposes of this guide, we'll refer to the existing system as eval01 and the new system as eval02. For network requirements, you'll want to make sure that both systems have the ability to connect to each other over TCP port 22 for the replication sessions over SSH, as well as TCP 80 and TCP 443 for the HTTP and HTTPS logins. This is typically possible if both systems are on the same subnet, but it's not guaranteed, especially if there are security devices such as firewalls or intrusion detection and prevention systems in place on your network. Again, check with your network administrator as some of these ports being closed will prevent replication from working properly.